Hello everyone, I'm Sambhav Kothari, uh, the head of AI productivity at Bloomberg's AI engineering group, where I lead our internal Gen AI development platform and the ML platform teams. Um, in my own time, I'm a proud open source contributor and I've been involved in various cloud native and Python projects in the past. So today I'm gonna to be talking about scaling enterprise Gen AI. Um, this is the story of how, uh, when Gen AI emerged, we sort of started scaling our AI development approach systematically and how MCP helped us get there. So four key areas I wanna to cover today. First, Bloomberg scale, to give you an idea of uh, where we are operating at. Then the Gen AI development workflows and bottlenecks we discovered as we started developing applications. How protocols helped us scale. And finally, our MCP adoption journey and what it unlocked. So let me uh, start by giving you some context on the scale that Bloomberg's operating at. For more than 40 years now, leaders in global financial markets have trusted Bloomberg to serve up all kinds of valuable information they need to make critical financial decisions. This includes buy-side clients like asset managers and portfolio managers, sell-side clients like traders and research analysts, and corporations managing investor relations and treasury operations. Bloomberg operates at a massive scale, ingesting 2.5 million documents, 1.5 billion messages, and 400 billion structured data points every single day. With 25,000 employees, including more than 9,500 engineers and 350 AI researchers, we're not just building demos, we're delivering real-time financial intelligence. And this scale demands that our AI systems meet production gate standards from day one. AI isn't new at Bloomberg. We've been at it for more than 15 years. We started with machine learning for new sentiment analysis in 2009, and search functionality in 2012 and built neural networks for news team discovery in 2020. Our Bloomberg GPT research paper came out of our innovative culture and spirit of exploration back in 2023. And boy, how have things changed since then. But here, but what, but what's important here is that when Gen AI went mainstream in 2022, we already had an infrastructure mindset in, in mind and we were comfortable tackling challenges of scale. Uh, and when Gen AI really took off and we started building applications, we quickly discovered challenges and roadblocks in the development process. So we did what we always do at Bloomberg. We researched the problem systematically. We interviewed a bunch of our AI developers to understand their pain points. We want to know what are the personas involved in the development process? Where does the, what does the Gen AI development process usually look like? Um, and most importantly, what are the pain points and blockers that our internal platform users experience? What we uncovered was a complex workflow with many different stakeholders, from project initiation to primitive preparation, proof of concept, productionization, maintenance. We had AI, software, UI developers, product managers, subject matter experts, risk and legal reviews, and senior stakeholders all involved. Look at all of these handoff and coordination points. Each transition represented potential friction, delay, delays, and miscommunication. But one bottleneck stood out above all others. The biggest challenge we were facing was not building demos. The problem was transitioning apps from demos to production, uh, following proper software and AI dev practices. This productionization gap was killing our velocity. Teams could build impressive demos in days, but it took, took weeks, sometimes months to get, months to get it production ready. So this is the hypothesis we focused on. We believe that if we had first class support for AI integration ready APIs, uh, combined with discoverability and well-defined integration points, um, we could really help our AI engineers speed up productionization. Um, here's the key insight. This led us to thinking about protocols and how we could use them to apply dependency inversion at an organization-wide scale. When you have hundreds of developers building numerous applications across multiple business areas, you can't just hardcore dependencies. You need configurable, swappable, loosely coupled components. So protocols for us didn't just enable communication, they enable dependency inf inversion, which is essential for scaling all of these development teams. Which brings us to a solution framework. We've seen a lot of talks today, so I just wanna frame some of the key concepts uh, as I'm talking through them. Um, LLMs are the foundational models we're all familiar with. An agent is an LLM reasoning engine plus prompt and tools 
operating in a loop, capable of planning and taking initiative. Applications are user-facing systems that interact with these agents. Tools are modular capabilities used by them to interact with the real world. And finally, protocols are standardized languages for communication. The thing at the center of it all is an agent. Uh, an agent equals prompt plus tools operating iteratively. It takes in an input, reasons about it, using the prompt as guidance, and then calls tools to gather information and take actions and produce an output. This loop is what makes agents powerful and flexible. But here's the thing, agents need to interact with everything else in your system. Tools, other agents, applications, LLMs. Without protocols, each of these integration points are custom which slow down the entire dev cycle. So protocols enable interoperability, easy integration, and loose coupling. Think about what HTTP did during the internet age. It didn't just enable communication, it, built an, it enabled an entire ecosystem. And we'd already seen massive gains for applying this in the Gen AI age. By standardizing LLM APIs on the OpenAI API standard, we could easily swap between different LLMs and providers with a simple config change. Now, if you recall, an agent is just a prompt, which in some sense is configuration, plus LLMs, which now were configurable because of standardization, plus tools. So we thought if we could make tools config-driven as well, we could create agents at scale pretty cheaply and easily. And that's exactly what we started with. We realized tools were the missing piece for agent development, and we ran with it. So this brings us to MCP and how our journey with it unfolded. We've already covered the first half of 2024 and our previous slides where we started with agenting development at Bloomberg, noticed the bottlenecks, and began research for our next-gen AI platforms. The real breakthrough for us at Bloomberg came in summer of 2024. By Q3 2024, we were a bit ahead of the curve. We had our first tools protocol prototype, uh, and we had built out our tools infrastructure with a server SDK, middleware, and infrastructure components. We were proving out our hypothesis with real implementations, and this was before MCP was uh, publicized and widely known. We had built this internally because we needed it, and based off our, based off our own understanding of what uh, the ecosystem needed. Then in Q4, MCP hit the scene. From day one, we closely followed MCP's progress because we realized it had the same semantic mapping as our approach, but it was built in the open. We'd already seen this play out before uh, when standards emerge and get adopted widely. They create network effects that benefit everyone. We quickly recognized that MCP had the same kind of potential. Uh, when the second iteration of MCP was released in Q1 that brought auth support and streamable HTTP, we predicted that it would follow a wave of remote servers. This also brought MCP closer to Bloomberg's reality and how we were using tools internally. We also saw a validation of our remote tools approach when not only large companies like Cloudflare, but startups like Smithery and MCP Run started doing what we've been doing for a while. And this confirmed we were on the right track and we started aligning our internal infrastructure even more closely with MCP. And then the momentum really built uh, when OpenAI, Google, Microsoft announced MCP support in Q2. We were able to utilize our internally built tools with a variety of client applications without any additional integration points. Bloomberg has always been an open source first company and we are not just passive consumers, we also like to contribute back we saw MCP's potential and we were happy to converge our internal approach with the open standard because we knew it would benefit everyone, and it did. MCP, as you might have already heard a hundred times, is like USB-C. The servers are the plugs, and we were able to plug and play them into our agents. But like USB-C, MCP has two aspects, the plug and the port. This sounds simple, but what it unlocked was something bigger, interoperability at scale. Our tools could not only be swapped with agents internally, we could also easily integrate them with external agentic systems. And the ecosystem effect we'd anticipated was quickly becoming a reality. With wide adoption of MCP internally, we had access to a vast and growing universe of tools. That's the good news, the challenge, managing the scale. We faced new complexities like tool sprawl, discoverability issues, and governance. Agents now needed to choose from potentially thousands of tools. How do they know which one is appropriate? Which one should it be used and when? We're currently at the early stage of building an internal uh, 
approach to a scalable version registry of tools with metadata and usage policies. We're also layering in our internal governance frameworks for access control, observability, and policy enforcement. So what does all of this look like in practice at Bloomberg? A Gen AI tool servers are remote first, multi-tenant with robust identity awareness. Our middleware handles the identity and access control and observability out of the box. This means developers can just focus on developing the servers and they don't have to think about all of these additional things. On the client side, we expose these tools via a proxy that handles uh, single sign-on and authentication and translate, translates the request to appropriate remote server calls for backwards compatibility with the current MCP client ecosystem. But the real power comes from what we abstract. Secrets and tokens never touch developer experience. Everything flows through canonical identities, whether it's user identities or workload identities, via an identity exchange mechanism. Add to that our integrated playground for rapid experimentation and versioning of agents. You get full stack development loop where you can productionize capabilities very cheaply and easily. And that's how we scale from demos to dependable interoperable systems. So what have we achieved? The impact of this transformation is hard to overstate. Instead of a handful of specialists, over 9,000 engineers can now meaningfully contribute. The shift wasn't about lowering the bar for Gen AI development, it was about defining clear and powerful roles for everyone. Our AI engineers could focus on developing intelligent agents, but our broader engineering teams could now build tools for systems they owned. The separation of concerns dramatically accelerated agent development as our AI teams didn't need to build all the integrations themselves, they could now just simply compose them. And this shift reduced our experimentation time from days to minutes. It closed the production gap and created a flywheel where tools and agents uh, were reinforcing each other in a shared ecosystem. And perhaps most exciting of all, because we aligned with MCP, our internal tools could also now work with the broader MCP ecosystem with zero additional integration work. Um, operating remote tools at scale has surfaced some real challenges for us as, at uh, Bloomberg internally. As a result, we've identified the next set of problems and we'd love to work with the community to help solve them. Bloomberg loves open source, so we wanna build together. The groundwork for MCP has already been laid, but the MCP ecosystem for web and enterprise is just beginning. And with that, uh, thank you all. If you enjoyed this talk and want to know more about our AI work, check out the links. Um, if you're interested in joining us and building the next generation of Gen AI systems for finance, we're hiring for related roles in New York and London. You can check out the QR code or you can also connect with me. And with that, I'll let you all have lunch. Thank you so much.